Proof you want? It's proof you want! The Barbarians by Netflix is one of the hottest series on the streaming platform, and this isn't for nothing. The new German series, which is now streaming, is an action-packed series which tells the story of the Battle of Tudelberg Forest. This was a war that happened between the Germanic peoples and the Romans. While this might sound like too much history, it really is better when you see it on the screen. Featuring a conflicted protagonist, a heroine that just perfectly suits our needs, and an interesting plot, The Barbarian should surely go on your list of series you want to binge watch. In this video, we'll be sharing with you every little thing we think you should know about the Barbarians. But first, a simple reminder on how to enter our brand new giveaway. We're giving away either an iPhone X Max, the new iPad mini, or a MacBook Pro. It's all your choice, so be sure to leave a like, comment the keyword, subscribe, and turn on notifications to enter this giveaway. It's really that simple. The story behind the Barbarians. The Barbarians is a German series that focuses on the war between the Romans and the Germanic tribes. A German historical war drama, the series focuses on the occupation of Germania by the Roman Empire and the resulting rebellion of the Germanic tribes. Historically, this rebellion was led by Arminius. In the series, the story takes place in 9 AD, at a time when the Germanic tribes were being oppressed and ruled by the Roman Empire. At this time, the Empire put heavy taxes on the people and their small businesses and even asked for tributes. Naturally, the Germanic tribes attempted to rebel against the Romans, but this is made impossible by the petty fighting and disagreements between the tribal chieftains. It is also grossly hampered by the selfish aspirations of certain individuals with interests other than freedom. This is the point where Arminius comes into the story, and EQs in the Roman army, who is a member of the Equestrian Order, was taken as a hostage by the Roman army when he was a child. Interestingly, he was taken away with his younger brother Flavus by their father Sigamer, who wanted to ensure that that peace reigned between his tribe and the Roman Empire. Arminius then decides to return to Germania to help restore peace and order in the vicinity. At this time, Germania is under the rule of Publius Quintilius Varus. But when Arminius gets to Germania, he is in shock. His people are being treated badly. The soldiers beat up the people and nobody bats an eye. This infuriates him because these are his people. They share the same ancestry. Angry, he becomes a new chieftain in the Cherusci tribe. The same one he's from and manages to unite the other tribes. But this wouldn't have been possible without the help of his childhood friends Thusnelda and Falkwin Wolfspear. As expected, this results in a series of fights and action scenes between the Germanic tribes and the Romans. While Arminius might have been pushed to fight for his people after watching the Romans oppress them, the plot of the series is pushed forward by his conflicted feelings about his past, his behavior which causes him to make very human decisions. This struggle between being a gruesome leader and a human being helps determine the series and the direction it takes. But of course, it's more than this. There are a number of steamy scenes that will surely pass as not safe for work, and a bit of the supernatural in it. The cast of the Barbarians. Who's in it? Simply because it is a German series filled with German actors, almost every actor would be a stranger to you. Unlike other mainstream historical action series, every actor in the Barbarians is uber German, and this allows them to give their roles a certain level of of authenticity. Come on, it's a German series with a true story set in ancient times. What were we expecting? Let's quickly take a look at the stars of the show. Bernard Schwartz plays the role of Segestes in the series. He is a nobleman in the Cherechki tribe and the father of Thusnelda, a major character. Bernhard is a familiar name in German cinema, having appeared in film and television for a long time. Interestingly, you might also recognize him from A Most Wanted Man, a thriller which also featured Philip Seymour Hoffman. Another name of the show is Jean Gorsod, who plays the role of Thasnelda, the daughter of Segestes, and close friend of the protagonist Arminius. Gorsod is a relatively new name in the film industry, having appeared in a number of popular German comedies, such as Bully Parade, the film. She has also managed to get a small role in the Clint Eastwood's The 1517 to Paris. David Shutter plays the role of Fulquin Wolfspear, a character with a name as interesting as his role in the series. He is the only character who is not based on a real-life figure. That does not mean he isn't significant in the series. A young warrior and Thusnelda's lover, he engages in a number of hijinks that don't particularly end well. David is the grandson of influential actor and teacher Frederick Shutter. It is quite 
interesting to note that the guy that plays the main role isn't German, but Austrian. Lawrence Rupp is a big famous Austrian actor. In 2019, he won the prestigious Austrian Film Prize for his role as a haunted policeman in Cops. He is also a member of the prestigious and highly coveted Berliner Ensemble in Germany. Even though he is raised Roman, Arminius has Germanic origins. You'd remember that he was taken as a tribute when he was a child by his father. Sent back to Cherisky to help Governor Vasu, he ends up fighting his childhood friends Thuznelda and Wolfspear, and pushing his people to fight for freedom. Other important cast members include Gaetan Aronica, who plays the role of Varus, Jeremy Milliker, who plays the role of Ansgar, Tabor Milos Crisco as Beirulf Buddy, Eva Verana Miller as Ermina, Ben Sferensky as Berulf Buddy Y, and so on. The most important thing, as earlier mentioned, about the cast of the series is that it allows authenticity, like an opportunity for a group of people to tell their own story. It is also a chance for the actors to achieve international fame. Come on, it's kind of cool to know German and Austrian actors by name, right? This is the sort of casting we want to see in the future, not just Americans taking the roles that should be played by actors of other nationalities. The character of Thesnelda. While Arminius is the hero of the series, or the hero the producer wants us to see, the real hero or heroine is in fact Thesnelda, or the one most viewers will opt for. Thesnelda, from the start of the series, is the princess of the tribe, and a lot of pressure is mounted on her. But she is not ready to be pulled back by the pressure. Instead, she shows her bravery and fights for what is right. She does this even though it sometimes puts her against her parents, or will spear her lover. A particularly interesting disagreement happens when she tries to protect her brother after he suffers a serious injury. We should also remember that this series is set in 9 AD, a time when women were still considered to be commodities. However, Thuznelda manages to become a central figure in bringing her people together to fight against a common enemy, the Roman Empire. How many seasons are available on Netflix? The Barbarians' first season was released on the 23rd of October 2020, so it's a fairly new series, and this explains why it has just one season available at the moment. Fortunately, there is going to be a season 2 for the show. If you have been following the show, then you should know that the last season ended with the Great Roman Empire getting their asses beaten. Yes, the Great Roman Empire. But if you paid any attention in history class, then you know that that wasn't the end. You know that the Romans had an empire that lasted over 1,500 years after the events with the Germanic tribes. This means that the second season will be about the Roman side restoring their ranks, building back their army, and ambushing the Germanic alliances right back. Historically, after the Battle of the Teutoburg Forest, the reins of power were passed to Tiberius. But rather than take an offensive side like his predecessor, Tiberius chose to be on the defensive side. He wanted to protect his land and protect his people. However, there is bound to be a conflict on screen. History tells us that Germanicus, a Roman commander, marches into Germania and attacks the tribes. This might not happen on screen because of the defensive state of the Germans. However, we expect to see Arminius and Thuznelda at the front of battle once again. Fact or fiction? When portraying historical events, it is natural that this question pops up. But just like every other show of this nature, it is usually a fine blend of both. Arnie Nolting is a writer and showrunner for the series, and he said, it's not a history lesson. We are making entertainment. The most important thing is that the show knows when to be factual and when to add a bit of fiction to the mix. Also, it is impossible to tell the stories of historical figures accurately. Books have been lost and historians differ regularly. Regularly. So, creative liberties help to fill these holes, and even create a more believable picture of how life must have been at that period. Who are the creators? The show was created by Jan Martin Scharf and Arnie Nolting and they were also writers who co-wrote the script with Andreas Heckman. The first four episodes were directed by Barbara Eder, and the last two were directed by Steve St. Laguerre. The producer, Sabien Demart, has also mentioned that there is going to be a ton of drama between the three childhood friends, and what other better backdrop than the battle between the Germanic tribes and the Romans. The show is also the first German historical series coming from Netflix. It is also the first Netflix project coming from the Gamont GMB 
GmbH, which is a subsidiary of a bigger French company, Gamont SA. But this is not the first time Gamont will be working with Netflix. They had jointly produced shows like Narcos and Hannibal in the past, but Barbarians remains the first German show from both companies. If you are in need of gory action scenes, drama between powerful men and women, a story of love, friendship, revenge, and betrayals, then Barbarians is what you should watch. Also, it's just six episodes, which you could easily finish in a day. And with that, we wrap up this video. Thank you for watching.